Our guest today is the Chancellor of the City Colleges of Chicago. Prior to her appointment, she served as a top executive at Commonwealth Edison. And how lucky could you be? Her two mentors at Commonwealth Edison were Frank Clark, 44 years, started out in the mailroom, went to the top, 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 right there, Frank, and John Hooker, there, same amount of years, started out in the mailroom, went to the top, top, top. So she is truly, truly blessed. She's a great friend of mine. Our guest today will oversee a nearly $600 million a year city college system with 5,800 employees and 120,000 students. She is a graduate of Olive Harvey College and holds an MBA from Northwestern's Kellogg School of Management. Our guest today is a Chicago native who grew up on the west side and graduated from Orr High School. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chancellor of the City Colleges of Chicago, Cheryl Hyman. Cheryl? Cheryl? Here we go. Thank you, Jay. How are we are. Well. Thank you very much, Jay, and good afternoon to all of you. I, I too, need to thank a uh, few people who you've heard their name mentioned, but I have to thank them. Uh, Paula Wolf, who is my board chair, Beth Swanson, who is the mayor's deputy for education, and Ellen Alberdeen, who couldn't be uh, here today. They have been with me through thick and thin, and trust me, it's been a lot of thick. So I thank them very much. Now, thank you. Jay? Okay. Now it's customary to start these speeches with a politically correct, funny joke. However, some of the best advice I've been given by my mentors is figure out what you don't do well, then don't do it. So, <laughs> moving right along, I am going to start this speech with a pop quiz. Now this is an actual quiz I saw students work on at Daly College on the southwest side a few weeks ago as part of what the teacher called Math Jeopardy. Because of my own city college's science training, it took me about 10 seconds to get to the answer, but I will be generous and give you the 15 seconds it took one of my staffers who was a humanities major. Now here goes. This one was for 300. Okay, time is up. Anybody have the answer? All right, here is the answer. The adult ticket costs $20 and the child's ticket costs $10. Now if you got the answer right, congratulations, because you would be doing well in one of our pre-credit remedial algebra classes. <laughs> if you didn't, you can always inquire about our adult education courses at <laughs> www.ccc.edu. But let's see how the two students who volunteer to answer the question approached the problem. Both of them got the answer right, but only one of them solved the problem using the equation taught in the class, which would have allowed her to replicate the findings even if the problem had involved much more complex numbers. First, here's our collective reconstruction of how the first student showed her work. Now, here is the actual work of a female student named Anatia, who methodically and rigorously reached her conclusion. This slide also shows us the way forward to ensure City Colleges of Chicago delivers on the promise of opening the door to jobs and further education to our students. But before we get to that, let me show you one last equation that encapsulates why Mary Manuel, when he renewed my mandate for change, 
told me, and I quote, to double down. There were some of, these were some of City College's key statistics when I took office two years ago. 90 is the percentage of incoming students needing remediation, in other words, who are not college ready. 54 is the percentage of students who drop out after 15 credit hours or the equivalent of one semester. Seven was the graduation rate when I became chancellor. R is the need for reinvention, our first in the nation comprehensive effort under which faculty, staff, and students help reform the institution to make it truly student-centered and driven solely by student outcomes rooted in accountability, transparency, and excellence. The goals of reinvention are very common sense objectives, yet they were truly radical and even almost revolutionary on our campuses when we articulated them two years ago. First and foremost among them is to ensure our students leave with credentials of economic value, meaning their degrees have value to four-year colleges and employers alike. We just published a second chapter of our efforts to document the progress of reinvention, which you should have received when you arrived. Here's an update on some of our vitals, some of which have been gathered since this document was published. Our graduation rate is up 3% from when I arrived as chancellor. Today it is 10%, the highest in more than a decade. All the while, we saved 41 million through the elimination of inefficiencies and redundancies. Now we still have a long way to go, but there are clear signs of progress. One of the first challenges we tackled was boosting readiness. The 90% of incoming students that are not college ready, more than twice the national rate, is an indictment on our secondary system. Now notice I did not say Chicago Public Schools because it is too easy and convenient to assume this is solely a CPS issue. Just under 75% of our students come from CPS. So the problem is not limited to public schools. But it is for this reason that Mary Manuel has repeatedly stressed that education reform in Chicago must address the issues plaguing both CPS and city colleges, given how interdependent our two systems are. Now, JC and I have a dedicated team that meets weekly. Our dual credit and dual enrollment initiatives with CPS allow students to gain key academic experience at the college level, but also, just as important, to assimilate to a college campus while still in high school, ensuring they are more successful bridging to post-secondary settings, whether it is at city colleges or elsewhere. We have doubled the size of our dual enrollment program, which will allow more than 2,000 CPS students a year to earn college credit while in high school. But we're also rethinking remediation across our seven colleges. Now, let me be clear, we never did and would never think of eliminating remedial education. But in many ways, remediation cheats students of time and money and it cheats taxpayers who have to pay twice for someone to get a 12th grade education. Our wonderful faculty is not the blame. We have to make sure we get our students prepared for what's next when they get to us and ensure they get through more successfully and quicker. Another key goal is to identify those so-called remediation students who are on the cusp, like Anatia, and with the proper support and monitoring can be put in credit courses alongside their college-ready peers. But those students whom remediation is unavoidable are getting a whole new level of help with promising results. Our reinvention team developed a free summer bridge program called Level Up that provides students with an intensive refresher in math and English. 
Level up reduced the time spent in remediation by one and a half semesters on average. Overall, 94% of participants experienced at least one level gain in English, and 57% of students experienced level gains in math. Across the board, in English and math, participants were successful at more than twice the rate of non-participants. Now, a lot of credit for this success goes to two of our faculty members serving on reinvention task forces, Jewel Young of Olive Harvey College and Rowena Messiah of Daly College, who exemplify how so much of reinvention are driven by those who know best, our faculty and our students. Then there's retention, that more than half of our students vanish before the end of their freshman year is only in part due to a lack of adequate preparation. Simply put, we must do a better job supporting students and articulating a, a clear, achievable academic and professional pathway. It's easy to get discouraged when you are left to wonder without a clear goal and no one urging you to forge ahead. We must boost retention. That's why we have cut our student to advisor ratio in half from 920 to one in 2011 to 450 to one in 2012 to ensure that students get the guidance and support that lead to degrees and employment and why we plan to hire more. We also brought on 120 tutors and core subjects, nearly tripling the number of specialists available to ensure our students get the extra help they need and deserve. One of our driving principles is that life does not have to get in the way of a city college's education. For many of our students, the most daunting obstacles are emotional and basic needs that we all take for granted, such as food, housing, and access to healthcare. To that end, City Colleges has launched fully staffed wellness centers this spring at each college to provide short-term counseling, referrals to community resources, including psychological care, housing, medical, food, child care, and legal services, and student success trainings and workshops such as stress and time management skills, test taking, and learning disability assessments. Through March, for instance, more than 1,500 have received individual counseling, 200 have been active in student support groups, and several dozen have been referred for psychological and other services. This, too, was the brainchild of a faculty member as part of reinvention, Roberta Boyle, one of our adjunct professors. It's not because they experience some of those life issues that the students are not academically equipped. You may know I was a high school dropout with a difficult family life whose trajectory was changed with the help of some loving friends and relatives, but also the dedication of faculty at Olive Harvey College, which sent me on my way to IIT for a bachelor's, North Park for a master's, Northwestern for an MBA, and a successful career as a ComEd executive. The new president of Olive Harvey, Craig Follins, himself went from a GED to a PhD after a similar story that included a stint in the Army to break with some bad changes in a rough New York neighborhood and even at one point being asked to leave the community college he attended. The fact that many of us in leadership at city colleges have walked a mile in our students' shoes informs our approach for supporting them every day. We understand we cannot allow our students' problems to be used as an excuse for the fact our students may not reach their full potential. In tandem with our drive to boost retention is our effort to boost the relevance of our programs through our College to Careers initiative, which Mary Emanuel launched in December. Now let me be clear. We do not have a labor and job shortage so much as we have a skill shortage. Today, 100,000 jobs are going unfilled 
in Chicagoland because of a skills to jobs mismatch, which is another way of saying there's a mismatch between what employers want and what we teach. Our answer is to partner with industry leaders to design the curriculum needed to train our students for success in high growth, high wage fields and provide students with access to teacher practitioners, internships and the latest technologies as well as a first shot at job interviews. The idea is simple, get the skills, get the job. Now it's high time we stop demonizing vocational training. Getting the skills for a job is not taboo, nor is it a stigma. My own grandmother went to Olive Harvey and Malcolm X to become a nurse. Now you're looking at my grandmother's old Malcolm X college ID, which I found in her things after she passed away last year. That discovery was a powerful illustration of some of her last words to me. Make sure other people have the same opportunity we did. And that is my daily reminder of our mission and mine as chancellor. Now I'm sure many of us in this room know people who went on to successful careers and lives after so-called vocational training. Our first two college to careers initiatives are in healthcare at Malcolm X College and transportation distribution and logistics, TDNL for short, at Olive Harvey College. Industries that together are forecasted to have nearly 200,000 local job openings over the next 10 years. Now, both colleges offered credentials in these fields for decades and doing it well in the overwhelming majority of cases. But here is the question. Were they teaching to the right skills and jobs? Our partners are here to ensure that they are. These are living, breathing partnerships, not just signatures on a piece of paper for public relation purposes. Many of these companies already have been holding work sessions with our staff and faculty. Just last week, all Scripps recruiters were in our district office to interview students for positions available this summer. Now, we will be rolling out more college to careers initiatives over the next two years. A key premise to college to careers and the rest of our academic reinvention is that no city college's degree should be a dead end. We are creating a system of stackable credentials with each credential designed to stand on its own, but also to serve as a gateway to a more advanced uh, one so that students can continue to learn and advance throughout their career. Take for instance, one of our new career pathways in TDNL. In just two weeks, a student can get a TDNL orientation and in one week, a forklift operator certificate. Now that certificate can be parlayed into later admission into an eight week basic certificate, then into a four month advanced certificate in supply chain management, and then that certificate can be parlayed into an associate's degree in distribution and logistics, which itself can be a gateway into a bachelor's in the same field. Now at each step, a worker can get a new, more advanced job but each step is valuable in and of itself by leading to a good job. Making our programs more relevant is a key part of our strategy to boost completion for all City College's students. Now, whether you call it general education, transfer, or non-occupational, we have not walked away from preparing students to go on to four-year colleges and universities like I did. For those students whose career aspirations imply a bachelor's degree from the start, which is about a third of our 120,000 students, we have created special transfer centers to help them select the right courses and ensure they transfer successfully. Not only can the typical student save $40,000 in tuition by attending city colleges first, but we now have processes in place to sync course requirements and ensure our students transfer as full juniors without losing precious time and tuition dollars at their destination for your institution. 
Transfer agreements have recently been signed with the Illinois Institute of Technology, the University of Illinois at Chicago and Urbana-Champaign, DePaul University, and Lewis University. The number of students transferring annually from city colleges to DePaul has more than doubled, going from 750 to 1,600 transfers. With the presidential scholarship IIT offers, qualifying transfer students qualify for substantial financial support, including an annual tuition scholarship award worth more than $30,000. As a result of getting the word out on our quality programs and the economy pushing people to get more training and more education, our credit enrollment is up 16% in the last two full fiscal years. Now that contrasts with a 15% drop in adult education, mostly GED and English as a second language students over that same time period. So we looked into this issue and found that many of our adult education sites in the community were located where likely GED and ESL students used to live years and decades ago. Adult education is very much a business of proximity and we are in the process of realigning our presence with the demand based on the city's demographics today. And we are confident that that will help address the decline in enrollment in that area. Now, most crucially, we are, looking, we are working in a new collaborative manner with our most effective weapon in the battle of student success, that is our faculty. Earlier this month, we reached a seminal new labor agreement with AFSCME, which represents our adult educators. Now, AFSCME must be commended for agreeing to take an enhanced state in student success. For the first time ever at City Colleges, up to 8% of our adult educators' compensation will be tied to progress towards state achievement goals. This is unprecedented, an unprecedented step in Illinois. We are also investing in professional development and class preparation to fully support our instructors so they can be as impactful as possible. These are the types of initiatives that help ensure more students reach their goals and we are making progress here as well. Now, as I said earlier, when I became chancellor, the graduation rate was 7% and that measures the number of students who graduate within three years. Our data, which must still be validated by the Illinois Community College Board and the U.S. Department of Education, shows the graduation rate grew to 10% in 2011. Now this is a very modest increase, one we are not satisfied with. It puts us roughly half the graduation rate of the most effective community colleges in the Chicago area, and still well behind the best in class community college systems in other states. But it is City College's highest completion rate in more than a decade. And we are cautiously confident the trend will continue this year and beyond. We forecast 3,300 3, of our students will earn an associate's degree this May, up 800 from last year and double the number from 10 years ago. Over the last few months, City Colleges has worked with students at or near the required number of credits for an associate's degree to ensure they took the remaining classes necessary to meet foundation and major requirements to graduate and go on to jobs of further education. Under current federal reporting rules, less than half of this year's proud graduates will be counted as such by government statistics because they only take into account students who get a two-year degree within three years of enrolling. Now, if you juggle work, family, college, and graduate from city colleges in more than three years, you never appear in the official statistics. Now, we are keenly aware of the, of the fact that's documented by Complete College America, where I sit on the board. When it comes to college completion, time is very much the enemy. But while we are trying to get students to graduate faster, 
we want to make sure those who take more time are counted. As Complete College America found, the new majority of American campuses are students who are juggling some combination of family, jobs, and school while commuting to, school, to class. We need to recognize this new face of education, where City Colleges of Chicago is far more representative than the ivy-clad campuses where many of us attended. Now, Secretary Duncan must be applauded for focusing on this issue, as he called on the states to examine their data processes. City College's staff was a part of that process for Illinois. Our academic reinvention has been made possible in part by fundamental operational reforms. Now, it is incumbent upon us to operate with the accountability of a business. Who wouldn't expect a $600 million institution to be managed responsibly like any other business? The only difference is that we're in the business of student success. In two years, we have brought about $41 million in administrative savings that are being redirected to the classroom, where we often had seven redundant functions across our seven colleges, we have centralized key operations at our district office, cut management budgets, and boosted efficiencies. Now, we have taken some criticism for being bloated at our district office, when in fact, we are being more efficient and transparent, and as you have heard today, the strategy is beginning to reap benefits for our students and for our city. As part of a comprehensive review to bring benefits more in line with the market, we reduced our benefits liability by more than $1 million a year. Reforms have included ending sick day payouts for new non-union hirees, increasing health insurance co-pays and deductibles, ending premium free health care for city colleges leaders, and rescinding free lifetime retiree health care for those same leaders, including myself. Additional reforms are underway, including some in close cooperation with our largest unions, which make up 80% of our workforce. Some of our unions have already agreed to ending sick day payouts for new hirees, freezing sick day banks in place for current employees, but most of all, eliminating step pay increases for new hirees. All this has allowed us to invest in student success and to launch a five-year, 520 million capital plan with investments across our system. City colleges will build a new Malcolm X College campus, including a new Allied Health Academy to support college to careers near the heart of the Illinois Medical District and with the help of the state of Illinois, a new transportation distribution and logistics center at Olive Harvey College. All of this will be supplemented by significant capital investments at each of our colleges. These brick and mortar projects will reflect the latest changes in pedagogy and technology to ensure our students are job ready the second they walk out of the classroom. This is how Every day, a bit more with the help of many of you in this room, we bring reinvention closer to full reality for our students and our city. Now, I sincerely hope with the facts and the numbers you heard today, you will, have, you will walk away with the knowledge that when it comes to building a stronger Chicago economy, City Colleges is increasingly important and a relevant part of that equation. Thank you. Thank you. Knocked them out of the park. Uh, questions? Ms. Ginny's here. <laughs> I think that. Great. Wait a minute, Cheryl. I think, was that, was that $520 million capital? Yes. That might have been a stopper right there, the $520 million capital uh, plan. Haha, uh, -ha, we have a question. There we go. 
Desperate times require desperate methods. From Bar Barbara Olson. Hi, Barbara. Are internships available to students? Are they paid? Are they unpaid? Bar Barbara, you only could ask one question. You've asked five. Well, however, since you're the only game in town, I'll read them all. Uh, <laughs> do you see value in expanding the number of internships? What's the process? Pick out anyone you like, Cheryl. I'll, I'll, I'll answer them all. Are internships available to students? Yes. Not only are internships available, but as I said, we have companies who are hiring for permanent positions now for recent graduates. So they are um, available. They are paid internships. Um, and there's with a number of different companies and our college to careers partners uh, who are doing that. What is the process? Once you become uh, a student at City Colleges of Chicago, the first thing we do is try to get you with an advisor to put you on a proper pathway. Now, depending on which career you want to focus on, the process could be different. But one of the things we do is make sure we always try to partner students with the real world so that they get those internship opportunities. Martha Jantro, board member, former Chicago School Board member. How are students from the other colleges who take occasional summer classes counted? I know what she's saying. Good, that makes two out of three. <laughs> very, very good question. So you heard me talk a lot about the government statistics and how people are counted. I'm still trying to work on reforms to get graduates, all graduates to be counted. In that, one of the things we're trying to advocate is how do you define success? How do you define completion? Because it may not always be an associate's degree. It could be a certificate. It could be someone from DePaul who's trying to take some courses over the summer. So you bring up a very good point um, one of the pieces they cut out of my speech that I'm going to put back in is where I say um, some of these reforms I'm working on, I may solicit some of you in the audience. I'm going to keep your card because I'll call on you to help me with that reform. Thank you. Here's a question from some guy. No one, I don't, I don't know if you know this guy, from Frank Clark. Uh, please tell me more uh, regarding the partnership between CCC and businesses. How will this partnership improve the quality of the workforce? Thank you. Thank you, Frank. I knew I could count on Frank for a question. Um, the, in, in the speech also, one of the things that I said is a lot of the things that we're teaching and focusing on is things that City Colleges has been doing for a long time. The question was, are they teaching what's needed on the job? So we actually have had many, many working groups with all these partners uh, who sit in a room with us. Uh, for instance, uh, Larry Goodman him, himself, who is the head of Rush Medical Center, has been in every single meeting with my staff flushing out the portfolio of programs we need, not only for today, not only just for Rush, but for the industry. And now that we have that portfolio together, we're getting re they're getting ready to work with our faculty to actually write and build the curriculum that will be taught. So it, it's, they are not just partners. They are real partners who are working with us to help develop what's actually needed um, on the job. One more question, Cheryl. This is from uh, Maria Prado. Where are you, Maria? Uh, over there. How can a group like this audience contribute to an increase of graduation rates? Hmm. Oh, I could answer that. I could ask for a lot of things. That's really open. Sort of the answers before the so exam? Let me. Uh, the, the, first thing, the, the first thing I would say to many of the people in this classroom, uh, in this, <laughs> you can tell I run an educational institution. Um, in this room, 
because many of you represent the businesses uh, that our students would like to get jobs at. The first thing I would ask you is to have faith in the vision that Mary Manuel and myself are really working so hard to push through this city. Have faith in city colleges that there are good staff and faculty who are working very hard to reverse these trends and help our students become college ready and job ready. Work with us to help us develop the programs of what's needed in your companies. Work with us to help provide our students with the services they need to get through school. So I ask you the best thing to do is to have faith in our vision and become a partner as well. We have a uh, late entry. There's another question, but with no name on it, you know, the city club, we have no rules except if you're going to sandbag, put your name on it. It's okay, but you just got to put your name on it. This is from Michelle Wilmot. Is that correct, Michelle? Thank you. You know, you got a lot of softballs up here, Cheryl. Let's leave it with a hard one, okay? You're ready. I get those all the time, too. Why can't all sick day... Pe oh, Jesus. <laughs> you had to ask this question. We're going to leave all happy here. Why can't all sick day payouts be eliminated following a business format? Oh, great question. I can't wait to answer. You got one. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that question, and Paula, my board chair would be so glad you asked that question. There is a state law that requires us to allow employees to uh, be entitled to so many sick days. Not to say uh, that we can't look into that as well, which we plan to, but, but basically we did what we could to the extent we had to uh, comply with the law. How about a big round of applause? <laughs>